Okay, so this is Kelly, and she's got her ears cropped yesterday. So what I'm gonna try to do is a video to give you a chronological step of what it takes to take care of ears, which you can expect to see. So that way you can take care of your pup. I've been through this twice with two other giant schnauzers. And uh, this is my first time working with a cup though. It's a little bit different, but everybody's saying, hey, this is what you're supposed to do, or this is what we're doing this time. So basically what we're looking to expect to see at this point is uh, the stitching. Hold on, see if I get a readjustment since she's laying down. Hold on a second. So what we expect to see is the stitching from the sutures, stop, or the actual surgery. Might be a little bit of blood, things of that nature. So what we're gonna do, basically in the end goal, is uh, clean it. Stop, hold on, hold on. We're gonna clean it, stop. And so the, the sutures are only gonna be exposed on one side of the ear. Hold on, hold on. Let me adjust that for you again. Okay. They're only gonna be on one side of the ear. Hold on. Stop. Okay, stay. All right. And again, it's probably gonna be a little bit of blood there because obviously she just had surgery yesterday. Hang on. This is actually on pretty good. Hang on, hang on. Whoa, stop, stop, stop. I gotta find out where it starts and ends. Okay, this goes up right here. It wasn't planned. <clears throat> Hang on, hang on, hang on. And just so you know too, there's kind of a, an art form. Let me stay right here. There's an art form to doing ears. And so uh, there's descriptors, just like how you order, I guess, a latte at Starbucks. So she got what they call a medium plus, which is not the longest, but it's a little long in regards to getting a tall cut for the ear. Then you make a certain uh, decision on how you want the ear cut on the side, which is either a bell shape or straight up the side. Some of you guys might be familiar with Yahtzee's. Her ears go straight up on the side and that's a low cut. And then the bell cut is when, like I said, you do have something that comes out and Jazz ears were like that. So, Hang on, don't move, just chill out. So Jazz's ears are cut with what they call a tall bell or medium tall, stop, medium tall bell. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Cut. And then the difference too was Jazz, hold on, you gotta stay right here, don't move, good girl. Uh, jazz tips went straight up to the top and Yahtzee's stop. Now, the way I work with dogs too is that I let them do what they gotta do first. They're uncomfortable, I get it. This is a new experience. But then I will get firm as I go because I don't wanna keep chasing them or saying no or going through a disciplinary shock, right? I don't wanna keep doing that. So this time around, I understand she's uncomfortable. Ears may even be sore too, because I haven't given her medication yet. She just ate. So she still has to have medication. Hang on. So I'm not trying to traumatize her with so much discipline at this point. However, as we go forward, she'll get used to it. But I will begin to get a little bit more firm with her. So don't be alarmed for those of you out there. Stop. Stay right here. Keep pulling for me. And it's no different than when I first started grooming her. She was the same way. Now she's fine. Stop. And I certainly don't want her to be 
injured. Because as we go through this, you gotta take the scabs and stuff off. If she can't be moving around, then that happens. All right, so this is almost like the unveiling. Hang on. Ooh, stop, stop, stop. Also don't want to snatch any sutures or stop or anything like that. So these are pads that's coming off. And you can see there, oh, you can see pretty good. There you go. So the sutures are for here on the side and then they go up the side of her ear. And so that's gonna be <clears throat> the goal every day is to make sure that this stays clean and dry. That's the key thing. You don't want any wetness because sometimes the dogs will drink water, then they'll flip themselves and shake and the water will come right up here. And then the water will settle in here because everything is covered up and is warm. Warmth, moisture, and hair are your biggest fears because if this gets infected, it can affect the growth of the ear, it getting straight, everything. So you wanna keep it dry. The other thing is, is we're just gonna put some salve on it today. Because again, this is the first step. Should have had it out already. So the salve that we're putting on is basically just like a, uh, a doggy neosporin. So as you see there, there's no scabs yet. The sutures run all the way up the side of the ear. And so we're just gonna put this on. Hang on, Cal. Good girl. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So I'm not gonna touch it because I don't want anything foreign on my hands to lead about an infection, but this is it. Hang on, hang on. Cheers the rest of my family, yep. So that's what we're working with. So we're just gonna take this salve. Come back over here. And we're gonna take it, hang on, stop. And just go up the ear, stop. I know, I know, sensitive, I know, I get that. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Kevin, good girl. <clears throat> stop, stop. Hang on, hang on, stop. All right, so now I gotta be a little bit more firm and let her know that this is gonna happen regardless. Stop, stop, stop. No, good girl, that a girl, stop. Stop, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. There, girl. Good job. See, things will work out in the end. Stop. In the beginning, stop. There you go. There we go. That's another reason why I wanted to use something else other than my hand. So there's no warmth. There's no agitation. Hold on. Stop, Kelly. Stop. Stop. No. Stop. Hang on. Hang on. Good girl, dad a girl. Dad a girl. Hang on. No. We don't want to stab her ear or anything like that either. Hey. That's what I'm kind of light with everything. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. Hold on. You still got it to the other side. Yeah. Stop, stop. Hang on, hang on, Kelly.
And then also, too, she goes back for her sutures to be removed next week. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Stop. Okay. So I've gotten one side done. Time to do the other side. So this is our other side. And from the back, you can kind of see how tall her ears are gonna be. The ears cut off about right here. So they're this tall. And you can see the bell shape, right? So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> I basically squirted my salve up here. Hang on. Swap. So her ears are this tall. And the key, the taller you go to, and understand this, the taller you go, the longer you will be posting the ear. Because the cartilage, let me get a little bit closer for you guys. Because the cartilage, okay, go ahead and lay down. The cartilage has to get harder as they control the ear to put them up, stuff like that. Now, I've seen some people have uh, the ears done and then they eventually fall. Again, that's usually because you don't let them post up as long as they should have been posted up. But then also I found too, when I first started doing this, that there are cartilage chews that you could get that allows the cartilage in the bones, basically it's for hip joints and stuff like that. But overall allows the cartilage to grow a little bit harder. And that can affect the ears and allow them to stand up for you. But I think it's all about timing and compatibility. It's just like a last ditch effort to hopefully uh, save your money and allow the process to work. But the key in the beginning, so that way you don't end up in that situation, hang on, is post them as long as possible. The longest I think I did it was three months. That's a long time. But for those of you that are familiar with my dogs, you know, their ears were perfect. They didn't flop or anything like that. The tips went all the way up. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Whoa. Hang on. All right, so I know we're sensitive down here at the bottom, just like on the other side. But, as you know, we still have to follow through. And again, this is her first time Hope you guys can see this is her first time and everything is foreign just like anybody else goes to the doctor you have an injury or whatever hang on just want to make sure that there's communication she knows it has to get done and hang on. we all know that we're doing the best thing for her because We're medicating it, keeping it clean. Because if she gets an infection or something goes wrong with it, she'll be in a world of hurt. We don't want that. Look over here. Lay back down. Lay back down. There we go. Whoa. All right. All right. So we're all done. So what we're gonna do now, so we're gonna close this back up and we're gonna use the, the really tight knit woven gauze. It's not cotton, because cotton will get trapped in the scabbing and then you gotta like rip it off later or whatever and that's not what you wanna do. So you wanna, stop. You wanna use the tight gauze. 
to cover it. Bam. Oh. Okay, so we're fully covered on both sides. Hang on, hang on. And then we put our bandage back on. Now, you don't have to get the one with the dump trucks and everything on it. Hang on, she's falling off the table. Hang on. Ooh, sit down for me. There we go. Stay. See, now you made the table slippery. So as you know, this particular tape will connect to itself. You probably get like two tries out of it or two wears out of it and then you gotta have uh, a new tape. But athletes wear it and it keeps everything in place. This stuff is relatively cheap. Let's go to the dollar store they usually have it and I know the 99 cent store has it. So that way you're not spending 10 or 12 or $13 a roll from a vet, that's for sure. Wait a minute, the other ones come off, the other ones came off. Stop. Okay. Back in secret stealth mode now. Making sure everything is tight and not too tight is the key. Stop. Oh, we're still in place? Don't move too much. You're like Wiley Coyote around here. Fall off the table, so hang on. I'm a little bit partial for things to be correct. We're upside down with the tape. <laughs> I don't like that. So, up and around. So, as soon as it makes contact with the other side, hang on. It'll pretty much stay like that. We are back up. I'm not squeezing her ear, I'm just squeezing on the front and back. We are now back up. And again, the whole thing is, is making sure that this stays in place and everything is clean, right? So again, this is the first day. We had minimal bleeding. This has been on for like eight hours or so. Um, so yesterday afternoon. So at this point, I'm just gonna give her her medication. As you saw, yeah, with some little uncomfort, um, even without medication in her system right now. She's not screaming out crying or anything like that. Um, job was well done, everything was nice and even. And then if you follow along, like for the next three months, um, you'll be able to see the outcome of the hard effort that you'd have to do in order to do some ear cropping. I realize that some people might not agree with it, Understand that um, floppy ears are a byproduct of domestication of animals. It's not something that's normal for any canines in the wild whatsoever. Bear, wolves, I mean anything. Uh, the ears are designed to go straight up for proper hearing. Um, <clears throat> and then of course you have ear infections and things of that nature in some of the other breeds like your Shih Tzus, your Cocker Spaniels, because the ear will trap the moisture, you have the hair that grows. And again, if any dirt or anything like that gets in there, then you have grounds for infection. And less of that chance 
if you have ears that go straight up that has ear, uh, air flowing through it and keeps it nice and dry in the way it's supposed to be. So it's no different than docking the tails, taking care of dew claws. They're just byproducts that have come about over the years of domestication of animals or dogs. And that's just really it. So that is going to answer any comments or concerns about somebody having about, oh, it's cruel or something to that effect. That is going to be my explanation. I'm not going to answer that in any comments or anything like that that might come up. Uh, there's other videos too that will explain it to you in regards to why there are flappy ears within domesticated animals on YouTube that you can see and give you diagrams and evolutions of it. Um, but this is just a process to be shown of what it looks like on day one and actually taking care of the ears. So in fact, uh, you can do it properly. And uh, if you decide to go that way, you'll know what you're up against because it's one thing to find a proper vet to do the job correctly or do the surgery correctly, but it all can come crashing down if you don't follow through with keeping the ears posted and keeping the ears clean. So it's a, uh, it's a two man process. It's a teamwork effort. You know, you got the handoff. So it's, it's up to you as the owner in order to make sure everything goes well.